My name is Janine Crownover, and I'll be providing a demonstration on connecting, profiling, and masking an Amazon Aurora Postgres database. As you can see from my quick architecture drawing, I have a Delphix engine in the uh, North California region, along with the Postgres clone, a clone taken of a Postgres SQL database. Keeping in mind that in an actual architecture, you would want to utilize the Postgres clone capability. So say your Postgres is a production, use clone technologies for your non-production environments. Delphix Engine is going to then mask those clones and those clones can become gold copies uh, for future cloning of uh, uh, you know, sensitive data, if you will. So with that, let me kind of show you quickly my RDS region, what I have here. I have my Postgres instance in US West A and then I've created a clone a couple hours ago and placed that in US uh, West B. And then in terms of my masking engine now, I want to create um, a mask environment on that clone database, you know, development database. I don't want to mask production. So the first thing I need to do with the Delphix engine that is available on Marketplace, by the way, um, I'm just going to call this Postgres Dev, uh, and it's going to be for the purpose of masking. Each I, I do have other um, recordings that actually show each each entry in detail, but for this purpose, I just want to show you the quick connectivity and masking of Postgres. At this point, I'm going to grab the, that Postgres environment. I'm going to add the connector, which is actually need, going to need to connect to the database. So I have to have all my permissions set on my network to allow me to get into that database, port 5432. Connection name, I'm going to call this Postgres Dev. The schema name in this case is public, and this is a very simple database. Two tables, just for an example, is all I'm trying to show you here. And the port 5432, the login ID is this Postgres master, and then the password. Test my connection. Hopefully I typed everything correctly. Very good. And then I'm going to save. From this point, I need to create a rule set from this particular connector. So I'm going to create the rule set, call this post Postgres rule, sounds good. Choose my connector, that's my dev, and it brings in the two active tables, one's account manager and one's policy person. All right. Um, and it's everything that's under that, uh, that schema, tables under that schema public that Postgres user has access to. And then I'm going to save that. This rule set's going to be used then for my profile job. I'm going to go to my profile job. Essentially, I'm going to say, um, click on the Postgres, add the profile job, and then I'm going to call this Postgres demo. Select my rule set, which is going to bring in those two tables. It's going to look specifically at those two tables and try to find the sensitive data and the sensitive data in regards to HIPAA. Right? And then it's going to email me if there's a problem. Um, so I'm going to save that. I got everything okay? Yep. And then I'm going to run this profile. Just going to keep it simple. And let's see when it's going to be running. While it's running, though, I do want to show you a little bit about the database that I have. I have my Postgres database connectivity here. And so I have, let's see, select star from, you'll see that this information fully fully populated on the public account person, policy pers, and account manager. And then I'm going to just show you they're joined because ideally what I'm trying to show you is that first name from, from account manager, first name from policy pers, last name, last name, department name is only part of account manager. Email addresses, what I'm going to show you is once I run the masking job, we're going to be able to maintain integrity because within Delphix we do an update statement to the database and it's reading the data value in and it's running through its algorithm and giving the same data value in the output. So that's, um, let me see which database this is. I can tell you which one I have. Added a, okay, so this is the actual clone database and if I go into the, um, no, this is the actual production database sample and then this one I'll run and that's the clone database because it doesn't exist over there. I just want to make sure you saw that they are actually two different connectivities. Looks like my job is completed. Check the inventory and I have account manager. It has found an email and it's going to give it an email 
a secure lookup algorithm because you know, we have already set this up. If you find a first name, use a first name secure lookup. Very similar with policies in purse is the very same, but it, notice it found policy purse F name and still recognized it as a first name uh, secure lookup algorithm, similar with last name. Even though the actual name, data dictionary name, is slightly different, we use a little bit of uh, intelligence, a little bit of expression uh, pattern matching, and find what it might possibly be. These are suggestions on the algorithm. I, can, I don't have to take them. I can change them. I can remove them completely before I run my masking job. And this is important to note because sometimes I might not want, um, I might want to change secure last name. Look at maybe I want it. You know, it, again, it's not dictating what you want. You're telling Delphix the best way to mask your data. So now that I have the inventory set the way I want it, I'm going to go ahead and go to my overview. I'm going to create a masking job. And I'm going to call this demo. Masking method in place, just update data statement into the database. On the fly only works for file masking, and I have a demo of that. The rule sets could be based on that rule set, that inventory I just showed you. If it was a large database, a billion rows, I'd probably want to commit size. It, I could disable triggers with a prescript, postscript, you know, remove um, constraints and those types of things to help those large batch processes go through. Now, just before I run this job, I want to take you back to my database. I want to show you, um, let's see, where are we? I want to show you that this is the information. This is the non-production, the clone, the one I'm going to be masking. And that's our information. And then this particular database is going to be from the production, right? The one that we're not going to be masking. So then if I run my masking job, it's going to connect. It's going to take those algorithms. It's going to change the data forever. Right? There is no um, back-end cross-table reference. If you need tokenization, if you need to reverse it, that's a different demonstration I have. It looks like my job completed. So let me go back to my system. I'm going to run, this is the production. It stains Roderick. We didn't want to touch production. Now if I'm going to my non-production system and I run it, you should see changes. As you can see, Marvin, first name has changed, as well as the policy per, it's identical. Last names are the same. Names that were the same, Andre um, has now been changed. You know, they, they maintain the same. Here's Andre Alice and Andre Conway. Usable names. Email addresses are different, as you can see, right? They've all maintained the uniqueness in the email. Phone numbers, right? From this is, they're, they're the same in terms of referential integrity within the database, but they have not touched the production database. As you can see, this phone number 9890-2877. So we've completely changed those. And that ends my demonstration. Thank you very much.